Welcome back. In this video, what we're actually going to be looking at is actually adding in a timer, a clock that keeps ticking at the very top of our screen, that keeps ticking until we cross the finish line and then it stops the clock for us. Um, it allows us to actually give that competitive nature of the game. Now, because the last video was really, really long, I'm going to try and make this one as quick and as descriptive as possible. So the very first thing that we're actually going to do is we're actually going to look at our trigger script. Because we want our clock to stop when we cross the finish line, I'm actually going to select the finish line object in the hierarchy. And in the inspector window, I'm actually going to go down and just make sure I've got the right trigger script and double click. Now that will actually launch mono develop for us. And you'll see that the trigger script is here. So what we actually need to do is we need to create a few bits and pieces for our uh, clock to actually go through and the very first one is is we actually need to create a variable let's just call it timer because that's what it's going to be and I'm going to create it as a GUI text object so that way it's actually GUI text the only problem with doing this is it's actually gone through and we're gonna have to make a GUI text so let's quickly go jump back into unity and let's create that GUI texture so to create a GUI text, what you need to do is you need to go to Game Object, Create Other, and you'll see GUI Text is here. So I'm going to select GUI Text, and you'll see a new item that's appeared called GUI Text. And we can't see anything at the moment, but if I select the Game window, you'll see GUI Text is written there. So just a couple of things with different bits and pieces of what we're going to be going through. So the text is exactly what the text is saying. So currently it says GUI text and that's what that says here. But if I was to replace that with purple monkey dishwasher, you can actually see that that's appeared. In terms of the anchor, that's actually roughly where it's going through. So I'm just going to retype that purple monkey dishwasher again and you can see that it actually extends both ways going across compared to when it was in upper left. It's the positional component of the text. I'm actually going to change that to middle center. The alignment is left or center. I'm just going to set it as center because it's not too specific at this stage. I'm not going to worry about line spacing or tab size or the font. This does look a little bit better with more of a racing style font or a digital clock type font. But again, you guys don't have access to modify your fonts on your C drive. Uh, the materials, if you want to apply material to it, the font size we're actually going to play with. Let's just set it to, let's just say 40. Yeah, that's about right. Um, I'm actually going to move this up to the top as well. So I actually have to come back to some of the other values in a moment. But the font style, I'm just going to leave at, well, let's say italic. That might make it a, look, a little bit better. And any cool clock kind of looks like a, let's go with a greenish color. Okay, so from there it's green and what we like. Now the only problem is, is if I was to race that now, we don't want that sitting in the center of our screen. It doesn't work too well. So I'm going to place it at the very top center. So to do that, I'm actually going to go through and use these values. And you'll notice it's 0 0.5. And this is a percentage based system. So on the left, you'll have 0. On the right, you'll have 1. And the same for the Y value as well has the same effect. So if I change that Y value to, let's just say zero, you can actually see it sticking up the top there now. So what I want to do is I want to reset that to one, and then using my pixel offset of my Y value, I can actually go through and set it at the top with, let's just say a negative 30. Nice round number. Uh, pixels offset. So I can go through and hit play and that's now sitting at the top of my screen. Now you're probably wondering why Purple Monkey Dishwasher is there. That's probably not the best thing to do. So let's go 00. zero, dot zero, zero um, and just save that one off. So from there what you'll see is we've got our timer and if we were to go through it's not quite clicking up yet but that's what we want to happen. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is on my finish line script, you'll notice that I had that timer variable that I created. And if you don't remember typing that, that's that one just there. So every variable we define, unless we make it a private variable, it's actually going to be 
classed as being an option that we can set. So this timer, this none GUI text, I'm just going to drag and drop this GUI text onto it, which is our timing thing. So from here, what we want to do is we actually want to go through and get our timer to display particular things. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and say in my update function. Now, I don't have an update function yet, so I'm actually going to come through and place my update function at the end. And again, my curly brackets. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and state my timer, again, which is my GUI texture from up here, dot text is equal to, and then let's just set it to one. So we can actually see that my timer.txt should equal one in the frames. So let's save this off, go back to Unity and hit play. And you'll see that that resets it to one. However, it's not ticking over, which is what we need it to do. So what we actually need to increase is an actual timer to do that for us. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna play around with a couple of different variables to get our time ticking each frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called race time. And race time is going to equal race time plus one times time dot delta time. Now, Race time equals race time, that's fine. And this one times time dot delta time allows us to actually go through to set it at a reasonable time. It's not going to update it on frames per second if the computer is faster. It's only going to keep it to a proper changing time. So delta usually means in terms of mathematics and physics, delta means a change and it's a change in time. So from here, if I was just to go straight ahead and and run that, that's going to come up with a couple of errors. And one that you should be recognized and familiar with is that unknown identifier. It keeps popping up because people always forget to define their variables. So I've used a variable called race time. I need to define it. So let's create a variable of race time. Let's define that as a float. Now a float number is just a decimal number, um, similar to an int or an integer, but it can be a decimal. And I'm just going to set that to 0, 0, 0, 0.0, sorry, at the very start. Because we don't want our race time to be starting later. So from there, what we can do is we've got race time equals race time. Okay, so my timer.txt, let's just, let's just save it. We'll come back to that in a moment. You'll see that my error disappears. Let's hit play. You'll notice that my GUI text changed to 1 but it's not equaling this race time variable on the right. That's changing at proper second intervals. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our mono develop, and we can see that we set it to be a specific number, not this variable of race time. So I can actually go through and copy this and place that in my timer.txt. Now, before I go any further, I actually want to find out what race time is before I display it. So that's just a matter of going through and doing a little bit of logical ordering. So the very first step, so this step here, I'm actually going to go through calculates the race time. So I need to make sure I'm calculating the time first. And then this second line is going through and displaying the race time. That was calculated. So I'm going to control S and save that, go back to mono develop and hit play. Now, one thing that you'll notice is we're getting a couple of different errors that pop up. Now, the very first one is all compiler errors have to be fixed before you can enter play mode. And that happens when you hit play and you have those errors. So cannot convert float to string. So I can't convert a decimal number to be a text based number. 
almost. You have to do something special to it to make it work. So just quickly, I'm going to go through and let's just comment out this code for two moments. Right button click, toggle line comment and save that. And what you'll see is when I hit play, you'll notice that this number on the race time window is increasing. And I'm not too, not wanting this huge decimal number appearing on my screen. Maybe two decimal numbers, maybe even three decimal numbers might be enough. So I've got to somehow convert that decimal number to be text. To do that in MonoDevelop, there's a special tool that you can use. And Control alt c to make that back to a non-comment. I can actually go through and add one extra line to this race time variable. I can actually go and put in dot two string. And what two string does is it converts that decimal number for us into a string, but it needs a little bit of information first as well. So I'm going to open up my bracket and my quotation mark and type in F zero. Close my quotation mark, close my bracket and end with a semicolon. I'm going to press Control S to save that and go back to MonoDevelop, uh, Unity, sorry. And I'm going to show you what that did. So by hitting play, you can see that it's now changing three, four, five, six, etc. But that's not really going to be that much of a race because some races end really, really quick altogether. So I want to make it a little bit more accurate. So let's try this again. Let's go back to Mono Develop and change F0 because this here is how it's going to display that information. So it's a format. So let's try F4, which is going to round the number to four decimal places where F0, F0, sorry, will round it to no decimal places. F4 should round it to four decimal places. So we hit play. And you'll see that that's changing very, very, very rapidly. So it doesn't actually work too well for us. Once we cross the finish line, it says we won, but it doesn't quite stop our time either. So we've got two issues. The very first one, it's still a little bit too long. I'm going to go with two decimal places. And the second one is we've got to be able to stop our clock. So back to Mono Develop we go. And rather than F4, let's try F2, save, go back to Unity, and hit play. Now this actually goes through and will show us Okay, that's all right. That's actually a lot better in terms of timing. Okay, that looks all right. I'm happy with that clock. Okay. So from there, what we want to do is we want to be able to stop our clock. Now to stop our clock, we only want our clock to run when the race has finished. Or has not finished, sorry. So what we have in our on GUI function, if you remember, we said if the race is finished, it displays all this information. So let's try this. If the race is finished, open my curly bracket and close my curly bracket with all that information that we want and indent that by pressing tab. So if the race is finished, then it starts adding my race time, and then my timer is going to display my race time. So let's try that, save it, hit play. Let's go for a drive. Okay, well the very first problem I noticed is my GUI text isn't displaying anything, and neither is my race time. So if I go for a quick drive, all of a sudden, as soon as I cross that finish line, it starts counting. That's around the wrong way. So we don't want to wait for the race to be finished. We want to check to see when the race is not finished. Now, there's a special thing that we can do is we actually need to go through and it says means if finished is true. Well, we don't want to say if finished is true. We want to find out if it's is not true. And to do that, we actually use a symbol to actually do that. And that is an exclamation mark. So exclamation mark finished is the same as saying, I'm just going to hit enter again and put an extra line. So exclamation mark equals not. 
And when I put it in front of finished, it means not finished. So it's the case of actually going through and checking that extra thing. So if the race is not finished, then we go through and do that. Again, if you're having trouble with this logic, please come and ask for help. So save this, go back to Unity, and let's hit play. Now that has my timer actually counting before I finish the race. And it's also done one other thing for us, is as soon as we finish the race, it stops that clock. So 8.80. Now, obviously, you would have noticed that I have had the finish line right in front of my car the whole time. Before I do that, I'm going to show you just one more thing in regards to what we've already done, but just to double check to make sure everything's working, we always have to test everything. So I actually got 4.05 that time. Once I'm finished, I can actually hit restart game and my clock should reset. And there it has. So what each time we hit that restart game button, once we've done a lap, we can hit restart game and it resets my clock. All right. So from here, we need to do a couple of cleanup things in preparation for the build. The final thing that we need to do is we're going to go to scene view. And the very first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to place my finish line not in front of my car. I'm actually going to place my finish line behind it. So I just quickly select it in the hierarchy window and then with my move tool selected by pressing W or selecting that tool, I can click and drag using the gizmos. And I'm just going to line it up again with that there. Okay. The very next thing I need to do is to, to actually get rid of or turn off this big grey block. I don't want it to look like that. So I'm actually going to go through and with my finish line selected, I'm going to go through and uncheck the mesh renderer which allows me to turn off what it looks like but when we're in editing mode we can still see the collider is there and the collider will still be there but it'll be invisible to the player once you're playing so in this video we've actually looked at the timing of our GUI text now if you want you can go through and change this however you wish if you want to make it bold and italic or even increase the size you're more than welcome to do that. Play around with it. If you want things in different locations, that's fine. Have a go. Um, in our next lesson, we'll actually be looking at finalising, checking everything that works, and then building our game. Until.